All right, and there is our finished product all ready to put in the truck. Much better than that rusty piece of crap I had with a dinged up ball. Well, I backed into a stone wall and dinged up my hitch ball, so I'm going to be replacing it. Now you notice there's a bunch of hits from a hammer, and that's because I couldn't get it out of the receiver part of the hitch. So I used a hammer, and now what I feared, I've uh, ovaled out this nut. And besides that, it's so incredibly dirty, you'd never get it off. I tried just to make it budge using a pipe wrench because I don't have a big enough wrench for this. And then to add leverage to that, you got a big inch and five sixteenths. You slip around it, and then you have all this extra leverage, but I can't get it to budge. So I'm going to hit it with uh, P Blaster. Uh, it's a penetrating spray. And then I'm going to hit it with uh, oxyacetylene torch. And hopefully it swells up enough, it expands quick enough that I can break it loose and then get it out. Um, other ways you can get this nut off, take an angle grinder and cut down into it, cut the nut and split it, and try and wedge a chisel or something in there. Sometimes even just cutting the nut allows it to move enough to take it off. Um, if you're really good with an acetylene torch, you can heat this up and cut it off on two sides and then it'll fall right apart. Or you could just, you know, blast it off with a torch, or if you're real good with the cutting wheel, take it off like that. But I'm going to try and actually remove this nut, and that's what I'm going to show you today, is that attempt. You're going to want to clean the threads off, and if you're, uh, the nut is really dirty, you're going to want to clean that off a little bit too. Uh, so clean threads so you're not trying to go through a bunch of junk to get out. Um, I do not use this on metal I am going to weld. This is the junk one. Now, some people call this P-Blaster, PB Blaster. It's this thing with all the weird shit on it. It's the best stuff I've ever found. My dad was a mechanic most of his life. It's the best stuff he's found, so... Soak it. And if you have enough time and enough patience, do this, walk away, come back the next day, hit it again, come back the next day, hit it again, then try and take it apart. This stuff takes a little bit of time to work through real big stuff, but something like this, five minutes it should be soaked through. I've, I've had this stuff um, in cylinders and motorcycles to break engines loose, so I like it. It works. I hate WD-40 because anytime it gets hot, it gums up and yeah, I just not a big fan of WD-40. Okay. Lesson one, this is supposed to pivot a little bit so it can tighten onto what it's doing. If you just slip it on, it's not doing its job. And then we want to go this way to take it off. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. You'd be amazed how many people don't know that. All right, I got my wrench on there, my torque adding wrench. and It's not going anywhere. They're, I can feel them both flexing, so I'm going to go ahead and try my acetylene torch. I'm going to skip the map gas torch and go straight to acetylene. Alright, when you're doing this, you want to get as much heat as possible into that nut as quickly as possible. wasn't hot enough. Sometimes you can relight a torch off of a uh, hot metal. I didn't have it near hot enough. Um, Flashpoint on PB Blaster, uh, I believe that's one of my other videos, I think it's like 140 or 150 degrees, so there's going to be some fire. And if you get it, if you get it heat soaked, meaning you get the uh, the ball hot, this interior part hot, you can always let it cool and try again. And sometimes just heating something up real hot and letting it cool down will break it loose too. All right, shut the torch off. And let's get this 
wrench on here. Still on there really tight. Oh, there it goes. So with cracking stuff like this loose, you want a big impact of torque all at the same time. You don't want to slowly add power, you want to wrench on it. You get past that initial friction point, and then it'll come loose. I think I, I think I need like an inch and three eighths wrench to actually get on this nut. Something like that. I didn't have one big enough, so I'm going going this route. It's coming loose. At this point, you want to try and work as quickly as you can without hurting yourself, because as that cools, it's going to shrink and make it harder to turn. If you get it too hot, you could gall the threads on the inside, or I call it like sugaring. It looks like it's coated powdered sugar. If you got it too hot, you're probably going to have to cut it apart. And another thing is working it back and forth like this can also help clean the threads a little bit and break it loose. So uh, if you get about to this point, you're going to want to grab a wrench. You're not a wrench, you grab a pliers so you can grab that so that hot nut doesn't fall and uh, set something on fire. And there we are. Now you just have to put the new one on. And uh, something about, I want to let you know about driving these out. If you're going to reuse this ball, don't take a hammer and pound on it. You're going to want to clean up the nut as much as possible and reuse it. Because if you just hammer on this, you're going to mushroom the top over and ruin the threads. So if I was going to try and drive this out and reuse it, I'd put the nut on just about all the way and then hammer on the nut. But this should come right loose, just like that. Um, I've done this before and had PV blaster around the bottom there and when I lifted it, lifted this up, it got enough air and caught fire. So careful when you're working with chemicals and fire. Um, also while I'm on the subject, if you use brake clean, I think brake clean or no, sorry, carb cleaner. If you use carb cleaner on metal and then weld it with argon shielding gas, it'll make phosgene gas and if you breathe it, you'll basically die. So. Happy shop tips. <laughs> uh, that is how I remove a stuck hitch ball. All right, this is my Harbor Freight sandblasting cabinet. I had to put a lot of silicone on it to get it sealed, but it works all right. Uh, what I'm gonna do today is take this rusty old receiver hitch which I took a ball off of in a previous episode I'm gonna sandblast it and repaint it as you can see it's pretty dirty pretty rusty uh, we're gonna see what I can turn this into Alright, now this is this is literally about as fast as I could go and cover it all. I was just going over it like that. You knocked a lot of the big stuff loose. Um, but I'm gonna have to go over it a little bit better before I get ready for primer and paint. Alright, this time you see I got a lot more material off. I still need to do a few more passes on it, and then I'll use some sort of rust reformer product on here, to pr and then uh, prime it and paint it with undercoating. All right, after the uh, coating of rust reformer and uh, some undercoating, there's what it looks like. All right, adding leverage with my big wrench here. And uh, I need to, I really need two hands to do this, but you get the idea. All right, and there is our finished product, all ready to put in the truck. Much better than that rusty piece of crap I had with a dinged up ball.